welcome to another edition of On The Block, where we dive into the blockchain world in Switzerland. Today, we are focusing on Seba Crypto, a Swiss startup that hopes to build the first crypto bank in Switzerland. Now, they've managed to raise 100 million Swiss francs, even without a banking license. And joining me in the studio today is Guido Bula, CEO of Seba Crypto. Now, Mr. Bula, it's been a downhill ride for some of the major cryptocurrencies since the highs of last year. Is now really the best time to be building a crypto bank? Good morning, Olivia. Thank you for having me here. Um, yes, we believe so. Uh, obviously, with new innovations, there is a hype phase. And after the hype phase, there is certain consolidation going to take place. We believe that the digital money and blockchain is going to be here for a long time. It's not going to be away. And so maybe it's a, a fantastic time to set up a startup in that regard. So you think we've entered into a phase of stability? Yes, uh, um, crypto is around six and a half thousand more or less for quite some time. Uh, it also has something to do with the mining costs uh, on that level. And there may be corrections from here, but we are very confident that once the gateway is fully open into crypto and out from crypto back into fiat, that um, the market is going to develop uh, quite. Just explain to our viewers what you mean by fiat. Fiat are the traditional currencies, right? Uh, it's like um, US dollars, Swiss francs, yen, sterling pounds and the like. As I mentioned earlier, you are hoping to be the first crypto bank in Switzerland. What gap are you actually trying to fill here? Um, the gap that exists is really to have the full link from the traditional currencies into uh, crypto. It is very difficult these days to get in and get out in particular. Uh, most of the transaction today, is, as an example in Bitcoin, are below one Bitcoin. Institutional money has recognized the mm -hmm. potential of digital currencies and, and blockchain and would like to enter in a bigger size into that market. So, so who are these customers that you are referring to? Is it just crypto enthusiasts or any crypto firms? The interesting thing is that those people that are closely linked to the industry, and that we can take a wider context, is the fourth industrial revolution, and those people have been involved in blockchain for quite some time. And um, those people, uh, it was quite difficult uh, to invest into blockchain or um, crypto assets um, in a regulated, transparent way. Are you talking about high net worth individuals as well? Ultra high net worth mm -hmm. individuals. Um, they are uh, very interested for two reasons. One is the technical aspect of it. Right? So it's blockchain and crypto and the new business model that will um, emerge out of it. But the second one is also about wealth preservation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we could talk a long time about it, but Bitcoin can be considered as a very stable um, a store of value. That can be taken as one view, but we know that in Switzerland, one of the most challenging things for crypto companies has been access to bank accounts or banking services. Some companies have actually managed to open accounts, but then had them closed down. So. Is that a service that you will be providing? Definitely, definitely. We will provide um, a custody storage and we will provide transaction banking services. And us as SEBA, uh, as a company, not, uh, notabene a Swiss company with Swiss money and Swiss founders, we had a very hard time to find a bank that opens account for us just so for the foundation. So you know firsthand the challenges. We know it firsthand how challenging it is. And Switzerland has declared um, the beginning of this year that it wants to be one of the crypto nations of the world in five years. But how can you be that nation if you don't offer those services to the wider uh, crypto community? We will actually touch on this a little bit later, but just look at you yourself. You're a former banker at UBS. Yes. And among your team, you also have other former bankers. So you must know everything about know your customer and the issues that traditional banks have about money laundering. Do you have these concerns with the new bank as well? Absolutely. We want to be fulfill the highest standards 
uh, and, uh, and, and be compliant with the regulation when it comes to know your client and, and AML. And this is one of the key qualifiers to be in that market and receive a banking license. How will you ensure that then? We are um, going through the securities, um, the banking license. Mm -hmm. We are applying for the banking and securities license, which is the highest license you can achieve in banking in Switzerland. And in, as part of that process, we have to show evidence that we can deal with these uh, concerns in a very effective way for this new asset class. Uh, I think it's interesting also to note that there is not a crypto bank license. There is right. just a bank license. And as a bank, you can, do, you can deal with bankable assets. And crypto is a new set of assets, and we have to fulfill these standards. So you are in the process of obtaining this license from FINMA. Yeah. Why are you so confident that you will get this license? Well, there are, there are uh, three, it's a good question, it's, there are three components of it, right, mm. in order to establish a bank. First, it's capital. And uh, in order to receive a license, you need to have the right mix of capital. You cannot just come with capital and say, here I am and I want to have mm -hmm. a banking license. The second one is technology. And uh, you, we have to have technology that is proven. But also we are going to use technology that is particular for crypto and blockchain. And the third one is governance. That uh, the regulator is comfortable that the people that are involved know actually what they're doing and have an experience and the knowledge to run a regulated bank. And also because some people on the board, you say, are in very close contact with FINMA or are trusted figures in the space. Uh, yes, Is that... I mean, uh, we are I'm very proud that we have a substantial board. Um, we have um, the, our chairman, Andreas Amschmond. He's a very reputable person who has basically revolutionized the FX trading at the beginning of this millennium. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Mr. Urs Zulauf, who was actually part of FINMA in his career, among other... Um, okay. Among... So, so you have former FINMA players within that team. Yeah. Now, have you ever thought that if you didn't get this licence, what is your plan B going to look like? <laughs> well... When you're going out on that journey, one is very optimistic mm. and we are obviously very comfortable that we are going to, um, to uh, get this license. Um, however, um, the plan B mm -hmm. would be to deliver just a new, a new kind of um, banking experience. Mm -hmm. the, the crypto license... But if they refuse a license, that could say a lot for or set a precedent for other banks not to get into this space. If you want to be a crypto bank, as we define it, you have to have a banking license. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we would be probably set this as an example on how not to do it. Well, we'll have to wait and see on that. Now, what's very interesting is I was looking at your investors, not just from Switzerland, but also from Asia. So Malaysia, Hong Kong. Is this a signal as to what your future or long-term ambitions are going to be? Um, we are very lucky that we have found private investors mm -hmm. and institutional investors. And we have a good mix of Swiss investors and international investors. Um, we believe that Asia is a very important part. I mean, I'm saying the obvious here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe that the traditional ties between Switzerland and Asia are going to be fundamental in developing future uh, business plans. If it works here kind of like a test market, then you do hope to have a footprint in Asia eventually. Absolutely. That is part of our, that is part of our ambition. But first, we have to learn mm. to walk before we can run. Right. And so one of the challenges is not only obtaining this banking license, but also dealing with this idea of image and getting people to open up to this asset class. Is that a challenge that you've faced? I think so. I mean... Our, all our investors are strategic investors. They have invested for some reasons and they have experienced the deficiencies of the market right now and the positives of the market. So what we, SEBA brings um, the two worlds together, the fiat and the crypto, because we believe it, it will not be sustainable to have two standards mm -hmm. in regulation for digital money and for fiat money. 
Now, the Swiss Banking Association actually recently released guidelines for banks on dealing with crypto companies. Are you in any way aligned with these new guidelines? Absolutely. I think the guidelines, I, as far as I understand, mm -hmm. are a signal to make the banks more comfortable to deal with crypto companies. Do you think it's effective or it will still take time to warm up? It, it still takes time to warm up, I believe. And uh, if you also talk in the, in, in, with, with the population, I mean, you have enthusiasts and evangelists and you have those people that are more, mm -hmm. you know, they see the, the glass half empty. Mm -hmm. And the only way to overcome this is education, right? The demystification of blockchain and, and, and crypto assets in general and what it can do, not only for the technology, the crypto community, but also for the, the real companies, the mid-sized companies. The issue you see here is actually a lack of education. The resistance towards this asset class comes maybe from them not knowing enough about it. Yes, so definitely that's one thing. So for instance, Bitcoin, one can have a dialogue what it is and what it isn't, and you have extreme views. I think the best way to go through this, to take it layer by layer and explain what it can do and what it cannot do. You mentioned earlier this idea that Switzerland likes to advocate itself as a crypto nation, but it cannot do that if it doesn't move forward in terms of crypto and banking, this relationship. Some companies here have had to turn abroad to countries like Liechtenstein, yes. for example. Yeah. Do you think that this new bank can stem this flow and actually keep some companies on home soil? I'm, I'm very convinced about it because blockchain, by definition, it means it's a, it's a distributed community. And that's the fundamental part of the architecture. And that means it's, if you want to have blockchain and crypto to really uh, nurture, it has to be also in an environment where various industries and companies exist. So for instance, Crypto Valley, um, it's not only about crypto and these companies, there are about 400 companies, but there is already a cluster that mm -hmm. exists for trading, commodities, pharma, biotech, private wealth, family offices, uh, health sectors. And I think the interconnection of these points enabled by blockchain really makes it happen. How much of our image do you think has been hurt by this outflow? Do you think it's a contradiction? You yeah, know? it is. In a way, it's a contradiction. But the outflow happens because they don't have a solution. Right? When the solution comes in, uh, the realization what Switzerland can offer and how much substance exists will basically bring back uh, the, these companies. Well, as we know, it's all about the big banks. They're the big fish that we're trying to convince. What do you think it will take for them to get on board? I think uh, we are going to be one part of it, you know. So we are now, um, SEPA is, is, is going to show how it can be done. But you are just one bank beyond that. How are we going to be able to change their openness or mentality towards these assets? When they see that the bank can function, and not the bene, we are a bank. We have a fully licensed bank, so we can deal with traditional assets and, and crypto assets. And they see how it works and what it does and how the clients are very positive about it, uh, this will be the first stepping stone that maybe the bigger banks are also more comfortable to this go into it. This will take time. You, you also need to get your banking license exactly. first. Uh, these days, prediction of time is, is very, very difficult. Sometimes things happen much faster than one expects, and sometimes it takes longer. So when can we um, expect this license? When will you know a decision? We are hopeful that we get the license somewhere in Q2 2019. Um, in which case, you can then start your operations. We can, we can start with our operations, provide our services, uh, but we will never compromise a standard, right? So if there are questions about certain standards, then we rather um, you know, postpone it uh, for a quarter uh, and to make sure that uh, everybody, from the regulatory perspective, from an investor perspective, but also from a potential client's perspective, mm -hmm. everybody is aligned and, and satisfied. And looking at the company, how do you eventually plan to grow it when you 
come into operation? What is the workforce going to look like? We, we are, right now, the team is roughly 20 people. That's, that's the core team. Uh, we are going to hire for the next 12 months 55 people. Mm -hmm. And we, in our projections, we are approaching the 100 mark over the next uh, two to three years. And then uh, we will see. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a very hard to predict. Um, and then we also want to approach different locations, as I mentioned. And I think we are growing very quickly. And just to finish up, I'm very curious. When we do see Seba Bank open up, if it opens up, will this look like a traditional bank? No, it will not be, it will not be a traditional bank. We have a concept of click and mortar. So obviously we are want to establish a new uh, experience of how um, one can act digitally. Mm -hmm. So it's not the self-servicing concept, but really empowering um, the individual. Uh, then we're going to have um, the, the mortar space. We call it the X space for exchange, mm -hmm. which is more going to look like a gallery where we want to have education sessions. There are very smart people. They already can look ahead one or two steps uh, forward. We would like to have them to come and talk and to educate ourselves. And the last but not least, we're going to set up a SEBA University where it's about edu education, gamification and certification. And all these three elements will probably be a new banking experience. Mr. Bull, I think you're going to be very busy. You have a lot on your plate. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Olivia, for having me. Mm -hmm.